Hi, I'm Shaikat. I'm part of Apache Ignite committer and PMC member. And I have contributed to multiple modules in Apache Ignite. Some of them are Ignite Sync that I'll be talking about today, and also about the REST APIs, uh, some of the REST APIs that Apache Ignite support. So today I'll be talking about data streaming using Apache Flink and Apache Ignite and how do we build a real-time data streaming pipeline application using two of these Apache uh, projects. So before we begin, I just wanted to also touch about what is data streaming and what is stream processing in itself. So stream processing is about uh, processing unbounded stream of data contrast to bounded data set uh, processed by batch processor. So what it means is that a continuous set of events are being published to your system and you have clusters of nodes which is processing and aggregating, applying its functions and analyzing and storing the result sets into a data storage system. So as you could see in the image that there is like a continuous stream of events which is coming in and there is no bound to it in a sense that there is no start and end point for this uh, data set. Application events, for example, like real-time scores for multiplayer game, or it could be also like order volume information for a retail web application, or it could be like what are the best-selling items in a, in a app, uh, web application, uh, what are the best-selling items for a retail web site or uh, what are the top 10 products which are uh, high, highest preferred items uh, which are getting sold. So stream processor process events as soon as they arrive, there is no lag, there is no wait period for that events to get processed. And depending on your cluster size, you can also you know, add more nodes to increase its capacity and to improve its processing uh, volume, or you could reduce so, and uh, depending on your needs, if your resource utilization is very low, you can also reduce nodes. And it, it's very elastic in nature that your cluster is uh, can be scaled up or scaled down as in when your need arises. So some of the other example would be for stream processing is uh, consider like ride sharing app where the ride sharing apps are sending events about a specific location demand. And based on that, the price of the ride fare can go up or down, and that that get used as an uh, that can be used as another example where uh, stream processing can be used, where each of the mobile apps are sending a demand information, and depending on that, the maybe the price of that specific location or the fare for that specific location can go up or down. So, why do we want to use stream processor? So it, it provides a lot less latency compared to batch processor. There is no periodic scheduler jobs. You're, you, and you don't have a bounded data set where in case of a batch processor, which always processes events in such a way that you know it starts at a specific uh, timing period, and then it takes up whatever data has it has received by that time window. And then it start uh, processing those events. But in case of real-time streaming application, you do not have such wait time. There is no scheduled job which is waiting for events to arrive and get accumulated and then get processed. It's continuously running system. And data can be processed partitioned in event windows. So what event window provides us a context in time which can be used to process those events. An example for that would be, what is the order volume for an application retail application per hour. What, what's the order volume for last one hour or what's the order volume for last seven days? This gives us a context of time in which we the event time are being used to you know, distribute and segregate those events. So I'm only interested in last 10 minutes of data or I'm in, interested in last one hour of data. And that is when we will start processing those events. And as in when we see the demo application, it will more get uh, 
clear picture like how event window can be used so the another advantage is like it can as i said before that it can be easily scalable uh, system where you can add more and more nodes to the job cluster if your data volume is very high and you need faster processing or if your data volume is very large and you have a large data set then you can also add nodes to your data store to increase its capacity so apache ignite data streamer is uh, the systems look something similar where ignite streamers are continuously sending events to ignite nodes and ignite nodes is considered to be a data storage or database where it is accepting those events and continuously storing those result sets and then we can also use ignite thick or thin clients to attach or you know connect to those ignite nodes and then do further analytics and process those events or run some kind of a compute function in the distributed ignite cluster so this is an example of how data streaming pipeline can be built and this resemble very similar to pipeline architecture in systems where you could see like as i said before like the apps are publishing events so it could be a mobile app which is publishing demand for a specific location it could be a mobile game which is publishing the real time uh, scores for players or it could also be a retail web where the order volume or the uh, top selling uh, top selling skus information are being published and it all get published to a message queue or a message broker system it could be apache kafka or it could be any other uh, messaging queue system so apache flink provides connector to um, apache kafka rabbit mq redis you can use any kind of a data storage uh, system to which the events can be published apache flink also support file based uh, connector so you can also use those also if depending on your system's need so and then uh, as and when the events are being published so in this example it is getting published to a apache kafka message broker and then apache flink is built as a consumer which start collecting those events and start processing them and here in apache flink can be used to you know aggregate apply functions like flat map transform partition the data or distribute them into a specific time window to process them and uh, or map those results set into a, another data structure that your application needs before its storage so apache flink get used as uh, a processing engine i would say in this context and then the result sets that are getting built that are being stored into the apache ignite nodes and in apache ignite nodes here it is acting as a data storage system where the ignite sync comes in play and it accepts all of those result set and get published into the ignite's data store so this is another example where apache flink is used to consume data from ignite data sources so as i said before in the data streaming application there are um, uh, you can use apache ignite as a data sink or you could also use apache ignite as a data source what it means is that in this pipeline application which you are, you could build using this uh projects you can use apache ignite as either of that like you can be at at the end where it is storing those result sets or it could also be a system where it is it already has those information and then it is act as a data source which flink can consume it from and then finally it can publish those result sets into a visualization app something like grafana where we can build dashboard out of the result set for visualization purposes another uh, area that i wanted to cover is stream safe point so stream safe point is about storing snapshot of a job including its source offset and job state what it means is that yeah, let us say your job has ran and processed certain set of events and now um, we would like to migrate that 
some of the nodes to another uh, cluster or we would like to migrate the job into a, another system uh, with a higher capacity so what could happen is that in point in time at t1 we can say like okay i would like to take a snapshot of this job and i would like to uh, take the complete data set that has already been processed and migrate them to a, another system or i can i can increase my cluster size and we can we can use the stream safe point as a starting point what it what it will do is that instead of processing events again from the beginning of from the message queue system it will start the processing from the last save point so that that advantage it provides like when when you are migrating jobs to a different cluster or it act as a like a save point which is created by user which is user defined and you can save a state of your job including its offset so that reduces the processing time when there are um, system which need to be migrated so stream save point is very similar to checkpointing but it is more controlled by user whereas checkpointing is another way in which apache flink takes a periodic snapshot of the job and if any node goes down in that case apache flink uh, and, and you add a, another node to the cluster then the next job will start from the last checkpoint itself so that, that's typically the difference where checkpointing is, is system control whereas the safe points are very much user defined for the project so in apache ignite we have a couple of already built connectors or extensions that are available for apache ignite data streamers uh, flink is one of them apache camel flume kafka jms mqtt storm these are like some of the apache ignite data streamer which are already available into the code base and can be used as as a connector to build your project so you could choose to use apache ignite as a data sink or data sources which has connectivity to either of this system to build your data pipeline i'll next go and build a demo application and then we can walk through there to see like how we can build a data pipeline application we will start with a function and we can say l identical to So here we defined a environment stream execution environment which which provides a uh, sandbox kind of an environment where you it abstract away from the developer like where the job is running so it could mean is that either you could be running your job in a local uh, node or you could be running it in a cluster of system where multiple nodes are being used to uh, process your job so that specifically uh, the environment provides it it gives you an environment to run your job safely and and it abstract away the fact that okay some of the nodes may go down or it could have certain other issues so that kind of um, issues are being abstracted away from a developer where you your job get executed within that environment it could be a cluster of nodes or it could be a single node as well so out of this environment now we can define a stream of events
and here I'm defining a statically set defined data, but it could be a uh, dynamic uh, set of events also, which is like real time events which are coming into your system. So here, let us say I, I'll give certain SKUs which get processed. And then we will also see a, another example where we can also how we can send real time events to this system which will process those events. So let us say these, and the typical application that I'm building is like trying to get a uh, top selling products for a specific retail web, right? So I'll take this and add a few more instances. Let us say these streams has came, stream of event has came. And on top of that, I'll apply a flat map function. And here, what I did is I applied a flat map function. And this flat map function is very simple. It just takes a set of input. And based on that input, it will just count that number of time it has came and attach it as a value of one. So on that flat map, now the next function I wanted to use is key by. And the key by function is more like a partition, partition function to distribute the data into its key. So here, if you see the flat map function took an input, which is string, and then it gave us out as a tuple. And in tuple two, there are two elements in that tuple two. One is the input value which came in, which is the first element in the tuple. And the second is the count, number of time it has arrived into that system. So this tuple two, on that we can apply, when this tuple two came to this next function, the key by function will now take that tuple and it will partition the data based on the key. And the key now we will consider like this element which was the input to the flat map function becomes a key to the key by function. And once we have partitioned that, we'll apply a sum function. And here we will just count number of time it has came. And next one would be print. So this is a very uh, similar to the word count example that we see in data streaming application. Uh, here, it's just that you can assume that this is also can be used as a top selling products. Uh, for your retail app and you are just counting which is the uh, best selling products for your application for your application and now the next function would be event dot execute and here to touch upon few things here is you can consider from elements and passing that set of input that i have given is like a source, it's your data source. Although it is statically defined, it is your data source which get processed by your application in that environment. It applies certain set of function. It's kind of like, you know, water flowing through a set of functions. So it's like a waterfall where a certain set of functions transform that information, it, it partitioned, it sum, it, it maps them into different data structure. And the last one is the print. And the print here is a console print, which will just print out the result set into console. But consider this in a, a real time, real world application, you would be attaching a sync to this application. So instead of using print, you will be using Ignite Sync as a replacement to store that result set into your node of Apache Ignite cluster. Into the cluster of Apache Ignite node, sorry, <laughs> my bad. And I'll execute that. So now you could see the, when, when I ran this, function
it is the previous result set. So now I ran this uh, code and then it printed. Yeah, that's coming up. So here you could see that one, two, three, four, five, which was the first scene that arrived twice into this um, application, it, it was counted as two because it, it came twice. So it, it, it becomes the you know, top uh, selling product for your retail application. So with that, I'll, I'll move into a, another example. Now, this is, um, this example is very similar to the pipeline we have shared earlier. So here, the example was like app is sending a set of events into your Apache Kafka broker, and then your Flink is consuming those events, processing them, and then storing the result set into Ignite Sync. So to run this, I'll just quickly uh, go through the code. So here you could see like we have defined Ignite Sync and the sync has few functions and attributes where we say set allow override true, which means like whether we are allowed to override the key in which the result was written. And we, if you say it to false, then it will just accept the first result for that key and it will not allow you to write it again. And you could also set auto flush frequency, which means like I've set here five seconds. So which means like at every five seconds your, from your streamer, the data will be sent to your cluster. That, that's the flush frequency of your application. And this example is very similar to the previous one we just seen, where you have stream execution environment. You get the environment in which you will be running your application. And then in this environment, you attach a data source. And this data source contains a Flink Kafka consumer. So here we are using a Kafka consumer, uh, which will you know, consume the events which is being published to the Kafka broker. Then we have window counts. And it takes a set of events which are coming in to that system. Then applies a flat map function. And here we split the data. So what split means like you could give a sentence and then it will split by white space and take those words and it will just attach count to that. Once you do that, then we apply a key by function based on the first element in the tuple which is coming in. And then we process those events in time window. So here the context of our application, we are saying like we are interested in aggregation of data or processing of data every 10 seconds. So all the result sets are getting processed within that 10 second period. Then we sum those events, result sets on the position one, and then we map it. And here we also use another formatter function, which is we are formatting the result sets of tuple and store it as a hash map to Ignite. Ignite accepts hash map as a, as a data streamer input, so here, we just formatted that data structure from tuple to we a to a hash map with a string and the int which was the value so here as i said before like you know we can apply a different function that allows you to transform a data structure from one to another depending on your system's need so once we do that then we again attach a sync here here, the Ignite sync was attached, which, which will act as a uh, sync to uh, capture all of those result sets and get stored into the 
Ignite database, and it will be it can be then again processed further if you are considering in a um, in the previous example where I have shown that Ignite streamers are publishing those events into Ignite nodes, and now you could also build another application where Ignite clients, thin or thick, either of those type of clients can be connect can be used to connect to those data store nodes of Ignite and start building another set of analytical apps which in which you would be running your compute jobs. So now that one set of results set are being stored in Ignite node, now you could also run a compute job which gives you more detailed historical data in a sense. Like in the previous example where I've seen like every 10 seconds we are interested in certain set of events getting aggregated, but then once those results are being stored, the way you format the data, you can also use that data which is stored for historical uh, or archival purposes. Now you can attach your Ignite clients to now build another application or build reports, for example, and use those reports for um, uh, further analytics, right? So here we add that sync to store those result set into Ignite sync. And we finally did an environment execute. So now I'll, I'll run this at example just to show how it works. And so keep a start a Kafka server. We already have the topic created, I think. Okay, I think it's already created. Now here we will start the cluster. So here we are just starting a Flink job cluster. And we could see it should come up. So here we have a available task slot one, which means, and we don't have a running jobs as of yet. And when, once we start the job, it will start showing the result sets coming in and it, the job will get executed. So go back to terminal. And I'll start the job. So this is uh, running the same job that we have uh, discussed earlier for the event counts. And in this job, we have also, we could see that Ignite Sync is being used. So which is like an Ignite node which gets started and it, this node will start act, uh, acting as a uh, data sync. You could see like there is only one server defined here. And we'll now start publishing events into this. So as this job started, we can also start seeing some events. You know, this job started running and the available task slot becomes zero and we have now a running job, right? And now we will start publishing some events. And this is a simple Kafka producer application, which just take a set of Item information, consider this like a product ID or SQs which are getting fed into that system. And the data publisher will then process them. So we'll just quickly run this. And as I started running it, you could see that it has started running those events. And with that, it also showing number of record being sent and number of record being processed uh, by the system. So you could see like real time, the data set is continuously getting changed. And as in when more and more data getting fed to the system, it, it get analyzed and you know stored into the Ignite thing. Here we will use the Ignite REST API and we will just see what, what's happening to the result set. So this is a REST API to get the, uh, to run a command 
query scan and we just running it in a test cache and these are the items information that are getting stored and we could see like all of those item in information count are same but as i refresh continuously you would see that few of those values will continue to change every 10 seconds so now you see like this element has gone down from those result sets so this is this is pretty much the demo for the pipeline application that we discuss so the apps which was the python app which was a simple data producer which was publishing events to a kafka broker and from there we use apache flink job cluster to process those events from that message queue and then we publish those result sets uh, applied certain functions to change those result sets and then finally at a 10 second window time window we took all of those result sets and started writing it to the ignite sync and now that can even be used for building out reports or any kind of another analytical application that you would like to build with that i think that's pretty much i had in the demo and i can take questions uh, now okay so uh, the question is how would you compare flink and spark stream in general i think there is a, a small difference i think both projects are very popular spark and uh, flink but there there is a very small difference in a sense that flink uh, allows you to process events in even if you are interested at a very granular single event point of view so you can you can start processing event one single event at a time whereas in case of spark it actually you know micro batches those events and within that micro batch a set of events will be processed so that's uh, that's more of a difference but i think both of those uh, projects are very popular and can be used alternatively depending on your needs yeah so the next question was like is it advisable to have flink stream and transform the data that is fed into ignite real time by some other technology essentially keeping flink after ignite so i think that is the another example that we have seen um, in the notes and i'll just bring that up so this is typically the example that you are looking for where you use ignite data store nodes as a data sources and then use flink to consume those information from ignite and process them and store those results set into or visualize those results sets into another application like grafana where you use them for building out dashboards or any other reports so that is that that is an another example where uh, we already have ignite data sources and those provides connectors to which you can use to connect to a flink cluster and start processing those result sets all right i think that's about time and uh, thank you so much for joining today i really appreciate uh, and thanks for listening to me all right have a good day and enjoy the rest of the apache conversations thank you so much Bye.